So this is a Hewlett Packard 8643A. Um, it's a pretty badass signal generator. It uh, it does sweep. It does markers. Um, it's uh, I mean, there's a lot of HP signal generators out there, but this thing this thing's really cool. Unfortunately, it's not in the best shape. I picked it up relatively cheap compared to what they go for in full working condition. Um, so uh, I it was you know it was one of those things where I kind of took a gamble. I ordered it and. Um, and you know they said it was working uh i fired it up it did have a message for amplitude error number one um let me go ahead and fire it up here uh so i did a lot of research um i did find a service manual unfortunately service manual is for serial numbers that are below the number that this uh is at um so uh, it, but it gave me enough information to kind of troubleshoot it. So amplitude error one, uh, is related to an ALC fault. Uh, when I turned it on, uh, it's not on right now cause it's calibrating. It does need a new battery. Uh, if anybody's ever researched one of these before, they do have a rechargeable battery in it for the memory. When that battery goes bad, uh, it has to calibrate every time you turn it on. Um, in this case, it lasts about a day with an unplugged. Um, so anyways, uh, the ALC light comes on and is red. So I kind of suspected that the ALC card was bad in here. There's a, a number of different modules. I don't know a ton about these things. And actually, I reached out to Shango66 thinking he might know. And uh, his he said, you know, if it, if, it, if, if it went bad, he said, just get another one. <laughs> so I kind of, you know, I probably kind of learned in my lesson here a little bit with uh, buying test equipment that I don't know is working or not. But you know, I, I got it pretty cheap. So I figured I'd take a crack at it. Uh, I found out by going through the uh, manual that there is a diagnostic to do. And as soon as it's done calibrating here, I'm going to show you how to run the diagnostic on this thing. It's not hard at all. Um, following the instructions, they tell you to go to instrument preset and do that first. Enter, uh, oh, sorry, there is a precursor to this. Before you do that, there's a set of switches here. I have the top of this off right now because I was checking voltages on the, uh, this is the, this is kind of like the controller card for it. Uh, this is the RF output card. This normally has a cover on it. Um, so switch A on, uh, or switch one, uh, switch number A, or letter A is your service switch. So I have it off right now, um, but you would flip this on. That puts this into service mode. So once it's in service mode uh, and it's done calibrating here, it takes like 12 minutes to do that. Uh, you hit uh, instrument preset, special code, uh, 320, enter. It's going to pop up and say, uh, I believe, uh, instrument uh, diagnostic or something like that. I can't remember, but I'll show you once it gets booted up here. And you hit enter and it's going to go through and it's going to do a full, cal it's do a full uh, diagnostic on it, self-diagnostic. Um, it'll spit out kind of, there's a number of different codes you can spit out. They're either, a, uh, a prefixed with a positive or a negative. Negative means it has not isolated the issue. Uh, and it'll kind of lead you to where the issue is. And you have to kind of do more troubleshooting with either a scope or, uh, a voltmeter. Um, if it's positive, it's isolated. What module is actually bad. In my case, it was a plus five, which tells me it's the ALC card. Um, so I was able to find an ALC card for 20 bucks. So I'm going to throw that at it. If that doesn't fix it, then, uh, I'm just going to have to, uh, I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, feel my losses there. I'll get one that works and I've got a good parts set here. Uh, but I have a feeling that's going to fix it though. The manual talks about, uh, kind of definitively, if it tells you that a module is bad, it's probably bad. Um, so let's let this get done calibrating here, and then I will uh, I'll show you how to run the diagnostic. Oh, there it finished. Excellent timing. All right, so I switched that switch to uh, the service position. I'm going to do instrument preset, and uh, I'm going to go to special, and there's special number. I'm going to enter three two zero. Enter, and it says test instrument. So there's, you can actually scroll through and test certain things. If you tell it test instrument, it goes through the whole thing. Um, so once you do that, you just hit on or enter again, and it's going to go through and test. So it takes it about 10 to 15 minutes. 
Uh, so we'll come back as soon as it spits out the code. I already know what the code is, but I just wanted to show how to do this. Uh, so we'll be right back. So I pulled what I would consider a bonehead move. I didn't know any better, but I should have assumed it because I thought it. Uh, it was in the middle of calibrating and I flipped the service switch uh, in the last segment of this video. Well, it crapped out some error about calibration not completing when I ran the uh, diagnostic on it. So, uh, yeah, don't flip that switch if it's not done calibrating first. So the instructions say to have it powered up, uh, you know, it's running like this, you know, after calibration, flip that switch on. And then now we're going to go through and we're going to do this. So we'll do the instrument preset again. Special three two zero enter we're going to do the whole instrument and now i get to wait for it again to finish um so do, you know learn learn from my mistakes because i don't edit them out um you know <laughs> there is a manual that explains how to do this but I, i'm kind of surprised there's like no videos on this thing um so uh let's uh we'll give it some time it like i said to do the whole instrument it takes about 10 to 15 minutes so let's see what it Let's see what it comes up with. Here's the error that I was expecting. So this has been con very consistent. It's the only fault that it's getting. Um, so it is a positive fault. It's, it's definitively telling me that something is bad. Uh, the only problem is my service manual uh, is for serial numbers below this. And this specific error code doesn't, uh, doesn't exist in the service manual. There are a number of plus five faults, and they're all related to ALC. So I, I'm really kind of just assuming that plus five uh, is the ALC card being bad. Uh, the negative, there are some, there's a negative five, six, five, two error code, uh, and it's for the divider card. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's difficult. I don't have the supplement, and I cannot find it. If somebody knows where the supplement is for the manual, service manual for this, because this is, this is like serial number 34-something, and the service manual is for 23, is for 327 something and below. Uh, so that's kind of a problem. I, I thought about spending the 25 bucks for the CD that somebody has on uh, eBay, but I, I need to email them before I do that and find out if it includes a supplement for later serial numbers, because this error code isn't in the book. It ends at 54, 55 something. Um, uh, so the way that this is organized, uh, uh, you have to read the service manual because I'm now I'm probably going to rehearse or I'm going to uh, recite it wrong here. I can't even talk as usual. Uh, well, I know I can tell you for sure plus means that it's definitively said something is wrong. I believe five is the module number. Uh, 652 is the error code. The one corresponds, if you look in the manual, it corresponds this being an 8643A. And I can't remember what the last two digits are. I think one of them is the number of options that are installed. This thing has certain has a certain option for something. Um, so uh, anyways, I couldn't find this specific error code. So it's really kind of probably one of two things. It's either the divider card or the ALC card. Uh, I, I actually found both. Um, like I said, I picked up I picked them up pretty cheap. I, it's the ALC card is the one that I'm interested in, and I found it here in California. So I should it should be here tomorrow. So we'll pick this back up tomorrow when the card comes in, and we'll swap it out. There is an instruction for swapping the modules out as well. I don't think there's anything too trickery about it, um, but I'll follow it anyways in case there's something that I don't know because I don't know what the heck I'm doing with this thing. You know, I, I, I've never worked on one of these before. I just noticed that there's a lack of information on it. So, uh, and, and you know what? I realized I didn't explain what the original problem was other than I said I was getting amplitude error one and I have an ALC fault. Uh, it's what trip, you know, what, what kind of uh, ticked me off to this error or, or tipped me to it was I didn't have any RF output. Um, so, you know, I spent a while trying to figure out why there wasn't any RF output. And, you know, so... Nobody works on these anymore, and it's probably just something I should throw away, but, uh, 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 you know, why not? I'll try and figure it out. So uh, when I get the card, uh, I'll go over putting it in. It's, it's not hard, though. You pull these little SMA connectors off of here and a couple of ribbon cables. Um, 
and uh, you take two torque screws out and the card just slides out. It's not plugged into a motherboard or anything. The only thing that's plugged into a motherboard down below is uh, the RF output and the, D I think, DC, DCC or DCS. I can't remember. Uh, who knows? Uh, I'd have to look it up again. There is a name for it, though. I also did validate that all of my voltages were correct. That's what these LEDs correspond to as well. So one of them's a little dimmer than all of them, so I thought maybe something was up, but I checked it. The 5.2 is spot on, the 15 is spot on. You know, everything, all the voltages are, are perfect. Um, this thing does have kind of a, quite a bit of corrosion on the aluminum frame, you know, and I thought for sure that that was the problem. Uh, it has a Navy number on the front, so I assume this probably spent some time on a boat or something. I, I don't know. But uh, all the cards look great. I mean, there's no traces that have any corrosion. There's no corrosion on anything. I mean, even the solder joints look pretty good. So, uh, you know, it's this is all superficial, all this mess that's on here. I, I, I actually opened up the ALC card. I opened up the divider card just to see if there was something obvious, you know, a blown out electrolytic, which I, there aren't even any electrolytics that I've found other than the power supply so far. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's actually, I think, in pretty good shape aside from the cosmetic corrosion that's going on here. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at this thing. And uh, here's my serial number, too, in case anybody's interested. I don't know if it'd be useful to anyone. 3440A 3, uh, is kind of the major part of the serial number, and then the rest of it after the A is specific to this uh, is specific to this uh, particular unit. Uh, so we'll come back to this tomorrow. Well, I'll be darned if that wasn't it. Bad divider card. So uh, I think I'm trying to remember exactly what the error code was, but I think it's earlier in one of the earlier videos that I was doing on troubleshooting this. Uh, so I'm not getting the fault anymore. Uh, I got it hooked up to the scope right now, and this is a 25% modulation at 500 kilohertz. And as you can see, we're right at 500 kilohertz, and there's a 25% modulation, AM modulation. Uh, so... You know, success just kind of out of luck. I didn't, you know, there's not really, I guess the manual is what led me to it, right? So uh, I wasn't, it wasn't super clear because of the serial number on this thing being later and the manual was older, older and I couldn't find the supplement that there's supposed to be for it. But, uh, but it, it led me close enough. The error that I was getting was very similar to one that said replace the divider card. So bad divider module which i've got the old one here and this is the part number in case anybody's ever wondering uh there's the part number right there uh it's the six zero uh, six one zero two six the bottom is the serial number uh so this module is bad and i opened this up and i couldn't find anything wrong but you know it's a bunch of early surface mount kind of stuff not really much to be able to troubleshoot there so it's just kind of a shot in the dark I found this divider card, I think it was $25, so not bad considering these things, you know, they go upwards of $500 to $1,000, I think, you know, I think I paid 50 bucks for it, so, you know, all in, I'm into it for, with shipping and buying both cards, I think I'm into it for, for $100, 100 and some odd dollars, uh, and this thing is, like I said before, this thing is really cool, uh, just the number of functions that it has, uh, and it goes down to minus 127 dB, I want to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, amplitude, yeah, 137. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and uh, it's got the sweep. It's got markers. Uh, I'm trying to remember what is it. Oh, it goes up to 1 gigahertz. Yeah. Yeah. 262 you know 262 kilohertz to, to 1030 megahertz so uh, this thing is really neat um and it's going to make a great addition to the shop here um you know for doing uh fm alignments and such so uh anyways not a lot of info on these things so i just uh, on some of the other ones there are on this specific one i should say on the 8643a i couldn't find much so if somebody runs into a problem i wanted to make sure i did a video on this to to 
possibly help you in troubleshooting, there is a manual. And I think what I'll do is I found the links online, so I will uh, I'll put the links in the description of the video. That way you can get the service manual and the what they. I had to learn this from the beginning. So as I understand it, there's an assembly level troubleshooting manual, and then there's component level. I don't have the component level. I don't think I could find it, but I think you. I couldn't find it for free. I think you can order it on uh, eBay. I think I found it, and it was a CD-ROM that had everything. You know. Uh, I wasn't downloadable, so I didn't do it, and it was like 25 bucks, and I just wasn't going to spend that. But uh, but I did find the assembly level troubleshooting manual, and that is definitely what led me to this by running the uh, special 320 with the service switch that I described earlier. So, uh, anyways, it did it did give me a fault that was useful. So, uh, again, this is a 8643A Helit Packard signal generator uh, troubleshooting. And one uh, last thing here, uh, I ran the diagnostic on it again uh, after I replaced the card, and I was testing it out, and I said, well, I better... There's a couple things I need to do. Replacing the card doesn't automatically trigger the recalibration of the system. Putting it in a service mode and running diagnostics on it will trigger it the next time on power-up to calibrate. Um, or you can pull the motherboard, not, not the motherboard, the forget what the name of the main card is the brain in it you can take that out and when you do that it'll force a calibration there's probably another way to do it i just don't know what it is but uh i did want to show you know result code plus zero which means there's no faults um so this thing's ready to rock and roll uh until the next part fails on it but i don't know that might not ever happen these things are built amazingly well uh, so anyways, I just wanted to show that's what the result looks like when there's no faults.